Okay, we're here with Ron Stewart. It's December 5th, 2013. This is Doug Stout doing the interview at the Licking County Library. Um, Ron, wh where were you born? Born at Fredericktown, Ohio. Okay. And what was your birth date there? Uh, June 10th, 41. When, when did you come to Licking County? In uh, May of 1981. What did your parents do for a living? Uh, for many years they farmed, or farmers, and then they sold the farm in 1960. And uh, then my, my father was working in town at factories until he retired, and then he uh, uh, had several apartments there, there in Mount Vernon Okay. okay. Uh, that he uh, refurbished and rented out. What? What year? Now, what were your service years? Went in in September 1960, and uh, discharged August 1964. Now, were you enlisted or were you drafted? I enlisted. Okay. And what what prompted you to enlist? Uh, the draft was after me. Right. I thought it was. And I did not want to uh, be in the army. I did not want to be a marine. I don't like water, so I definitely didn't want to be in the navy. So uh, I had taken a couple buddies up. Uh, they had already been to the Air Force recruiters, and I, they needed to ride up, and I drove them to Mansfield, uh, Ohio, to talk to the recruiter and, and for them to enlist. And so they said, you might as well go in. Also, uh, to see the recruiter, and I went in, had no intentions of enlisting at that time. Uh, of course, and he told us this tale about all of us being together uh, through our service, and uh, that was a partial truth there. It lasted through basic training. That was the end of that. That was that was it. Uh, they they come to Indiana and went to a tech school, and went to uh, Pacific area. I stayed in Texas, and. Uh, Went to tech school there and then ended up going east to the Azores and to Iceland. What What were you doing before you enlisted? I was employed at uh, 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 Dominion Electric, a small uh, small appliance factory in Mansfield. Was what your family think when you came home and told them that you'd enlisted today? Well, they 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 was a little surprised, but yet they they knew that I had already got some letters from the draft board, so uh, they understood why I did what I did. Okay, at that time, I know that was before our, before our active involvement in Vietnam, but could you tell something was going to happen and that's, so you thought I better, is this way I, I know that I'm gonna get someplace at least that I'm I pick instead of being drafted and ended up somewhere I don't want to end up or was it had you not thought that you know we're, we're going to get into some kind of conflict no I, I hadn't even considered that at the time uh, uh, my my biggest concern was the draft board and, and uh, having to go into the army and I knew I didn't want to do that uh, one of the things that the uh, Air Force recruiter told me was that I would have a roof over my head and a, and a cop to sleep in every night, and that was the truth. <laughs> okay. And what, where did you go for basics then? Went to Lackland Air Force Base, okay. Texas. How did, how do you feel you adapted to that? Was it? Uh, uh, it was quite different first few days, uh, but uh, uh, one, one of the things during basic training, and I think all basic training in all services, is uh, it's an indoctrination and work as a team. You really get concerned about, uh, uh, in my case, airmen around you and the service you're doing and want to protect each other in, uh, in whatever mission that we're in at the time. Hey, your two friends that went in with you, what were their names? Uh, one was Dave Leedy, the other was John Ball. So you went through basic, and then you went for special training to yes. school. Yes, I went to uh, Shepherd Air Force Base, 
Wichita Falls, Texas. For my, I had 18 weeks of uh, training to become an electrical power production uh, specialist, which is no more than saying we use diesel engines to power generators and uh, off-base sites for operations. Was that something, did you get to pick that or to pick to do that job, you know, to go to that school or was that, you know, was it, here's your options and there aren't very many and so. When, uh, when we uh, uh, went up to the recruiter there, we were tested and uh, uh, my particular skill showed a lot of mechanical skills so that is uh, how I got selected to go into diesel on generator sets, uh, maintaining them. So you were there for, you said 18 weeks? 18 weeks, yes. And then, then where did you ship off to? I left there, come home for a 20 day leave, and then uh, I left there and went to uh, Lodges Field, the Azores. Now is that some place you picked, or was that picked for you? That, the Air Force seat in need there and, and said you will go there, so. So how was that duty? It was, it was okay, it was okay. Uh, uh, climate was great. It was 18 months. Uh, uh, duty there was it's what they called semi-isolated tour. I'm not sure why, but uh, uh, I, I enjoyed my my duty there. Semi-isolated. What do you think? I mean, were you isolated from civilians, or that is that you think that's what they meant? Or? No, uh, probably. Uh, uh, very restrictive to the distance you could get away from the base. Oh, okay. The island wasn't that big. Okay. <laughs> and so, did you get did you get some time to, to travel around on the island and and well, I had, see had that? Uh, yes, I had t uh, plenty of time. And a lot of uh, uh, airmen left and went maybe to Europe or to other places. Uh, uh, they could get uh, hops on aircraft that was going. And they would take a leave and, and go there. I, I chose not to do that. Was there a specific reason you chose not to? I mean, or uh, probably not really. I, I guess at that time I really wasn't interested in Europe or anything else. I, I was just interested in doing my my time there, and making sure that I kept my uh, nose clean, so to speak, and uh, uh, ship back to the states. So when you were in. You didn't have any any idea, any thoughts of making this a career, or did you? No, no, I did not. I was just doing my tour of duty and and then getting out. Okay, so you you were you were at the Azores, and then you went to. I, after the eighteen months, I did come back, and and I wanted an assignment on the East Coast, and I requested that, and uh, they sent me to Dickinson, North Dakota. Okay. <laughs> And uh, so I was up there for nine months, and of course one of the things that the Air Force had, had, had said that you only had one overseas uh, tour of duty on first enlistment. Well, uh, I was in, I had went, well, I guess some of the story was this was during 1962 and I was home on leave for 30 day leave only got 20 days of that because that was when President Kennedy uh, requested that, uh, well, didn't request, uh, gave an order that uh, any military personnel that was on leave report to their next duty station immediately during the Cuban crisis. And uh, so I had to cut my uh, leave short but 10 days and, and head out to Dickinson, North Dakota there uh, for Dickinson Air Force Station and uh, report for duty out there. And this was, like I say, in October 1962 that I did that. And uh, so uh, I was out there, I got there in October 1962, and uh, along about uh, uh, April of 63, I was called into the orderly room to uh, see the commander had no idea what that was all about and uh, uh, was told that I was uh, selected for a special assignment if if I wanted 
to take it. And uh, I said, no, I wouldn't be interested in that. And uh, so pretty soon, oh, just a couple weeks later, they, they told me to go down and get a, a, a photo for passport. All those that were getting photos for passport was going to Vietnam. So I, I, I was sure that's where I was headed off to, was yeah. Vietnam. And uh, May come, nothing. Most of June come, and then boom, at the end of June, well, I was told to report to the commander again. And uh, so I, I reported to him, and uh, uh, he said, uh, I had talked to you a couple months ago about a special assignment, and uh, uh, they're really wanting you to take this assignment. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely not. Well, I asked where it was, and they wouldn't tell me where it was. Yeah. And uh, uh, I said, absolutely not. And uh, so he said, well, just wait outside, and I'll get back with you. And uh, so a few minutes he come out, and uh, he asked if I had a military driver's license, and I said I did. And he says, uh, there's going to be a vehicle leaving for Minot Air Force Base in the morning. You'll be the driver. You're going there to get an isolation physical. Said, for what? He says, I can't tell you that. So, went to my aunt, got the physical, and of course in July I wanted to go home on leave. And uh, uh, they refused my request for leave. And so then, uh, about the middle of August, they called me in and uh, told me to go home and uh, said uh, you'll you'll receive some mail once you got home. And I said, what's this about? What am I doing? He said, just do it. So I went home and in, in a few days, well I did receive this uh, mailing and I was to report uh, to McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey, in 20 days. And I went there. With still nothing else, no other information. So I went there and, and uh, gave them the paperwork that I had had. Oh, before I left, they, they'd given me this sergeant's name and a telephone number. It says, if you have any problems, call this number. And uh, so I got out there, and, and the guy just laughed at me. He said, what's this? I said, this, they told me to give you this. And uh, he said, this is nothing. This is nothing. And I said, well, they also gave me this number. You're to call this sergeant if there's a problem. And uh, so... Uh, he kind of chuckled like, yeah, right. And uh, he went and called the number. And my goodness sakes, he come back and he said, see that airplane out there? You're on it. I said, Where's it going? And he said, to Iceland. I said, Iceland? <laughs> and he said, yeah, just be on it. And so I went up there and, and, and I got to Iceland. I'm not knowing what I'm going to be doing. Right. And when I got there, there was this sergeant that met me when I got off the plane. And so then I did my year in, in Iceland and then come home. What did you end up doing in Iceland? I mean, the same type of work? Or? Uh, I did. Uh, I provided the power for operation. You know, you know. Were you sure that you were going somewhere? I mean, were you? I mean, did you think that you were probably going to Vietnam or something? No, because everyone was going west if they were okay. going to Vietnam. And uh, uh, when they said McGuire, well, I, said, I, I don't think I'm going to Vietnam if I'm going to McGuire, because that's on the east coast, not on the west. So, so it's, at least you could feel a little bit better yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that wasn't happening, right. but still. Right. Uh, so you did your tour there, and then and then you, your, your service ended when Discharge you were there? back at McGuire, yes. What was... what? 
stupid question probably. What was the weather like in Iceland when you <laughs> Wow. Uh it was worse here in Ohio that year that I was there than it was in <laughs> in uh, uh Iceland for the most part. We did have two uh, fairly good uh, snowstorm. Well, the, the, the month of November. Uh, well, I guess I ought to back up a little bit. Uh, in August, when I left uh, uh, the States here, it was 84 degrees. When I got up to Iceland, it was 48 degrees. And of course, I hadn't prepared for that. You know, uh, uh, field jacket and all that was in whole baggy because, you know, I figured I'd run around in fatigues up there. Right. Uh, I was wanting a little more than fatigues when I got there. Uh, most of the time, the temperature was around at 45, 50 degrees my whole time. The coldest day that we had was 20 above. Uh, the warmest day we had was 75 degrees. Really? But that was like 110 here uh, degrees. It was so hot at 75 degrees because we was adapted to that 40 something right. de degrees. But we had two, uh, the month of November, I mean, it, it was almost a whiteout all day, but the snow never piled up. But it was just constantly snowing, and, and I'm thinking, oh, what a year this is going to be. <laughs> but then uh, we got through Thanksgiving, and then the snow stopped. And then we didn't have any more snow till January. And then we got a, a big snow right after Christmas, and uh, yeah, it was enough snow that uh, down at the operations there, we had a snow drift that was approximately 15 feet deep. But there wasn't a whole lot of snow on the ground everywhere else. It was all piled up because right. of the wind blowing. And, uh, but other than that, uh, a lot of fog, uh, cloudy days. Was that a pretty isolated beach? Uh, beach um, post, or were it definitely was isolated. There wasn't any towns around here. Right? Uh, there was. There was a little town, and uh, of course, it was. We were restricted from going there. Uh, there was one. I believe it was one, one day per month that we could go down to the store and buy if we wanted to. And of course, we kind of refused to do that because they were just interested in uh, the U.S. buck, and that was it. Right. And the rest of the time, they they didn't want us in town. So, so yeah, we went down once in a while. I went down one time, but also uh, the docks was down there. So if we had any equipment that come up, it generally come up by boat, and and we'd had to go down there and pick it up, and then take it up, but we wasn't allowed to stop in town or anything, just to the dock and back back up on the hill. So you came back to the States and you discharged, and um, if I remember right, then you told me that really, things really escalated in Vietnam at that point. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, it was, it was a little active when I got out, but uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that much at that time. Did, did you have to worry about them calling you back up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had two years in active duty. To, but they didn't? Never happened. Good. Never happened. No. But um, they could have. Yeah. Do you do you know what happened to your friends? Did you ever, the two you went in with? Did oh, yeah, yeah. And one's out in Fresno, California. John Ball's out in Fresno, California. Uh, when he come back from his overseas tour, he got assigned there. And he's just stayed married and stayed there. And uh, Dave Leedy, he's up in the, uh, well, I guess he's in the Springfield, Ohio area, but uh, I see him every once in a while. We go back for, uh, sorry to say, funerals and that thing back up to the Butler area, and uh, we see each other and, and talk to each other. Uh, he had a career with the uh, Air National Guard up at Mansfield, Ohio, and of course my career was here at the base here in Heath. Is that what brought you then? So when you got out, did you go back to Fredericktown or went to Butler? Went to Butler, yes, okay, yes. and worked up there uh, for a while. Uh, went uh, went back to to uh, Dominion because they were required to take me back. Couldn't get a job back back then. Yeah, and they was required to take me back and uh, didn't want me. Didn't need me. Went into inspection and. And uh, 
this uh, supervisor that I had, uh, the, the, the fellow I worked with, from he, he ought to be glad I come back because uh, it was September before I finally, they had to take me back because I had 45 days leave on the book that I couldn't get unemployment or anything. I, I drove one unemployment check and boom, like that, I was back at work then. But from September to December, uh, this fellow got a 15 cent raise. And, and mainly, I believe anyway, as, as my work leader believed, uh, because they was wanting me to find another job somewhere else because they didn't need me there. Right. And so I had uh, went there. And uh, like I say, uh, I, I definitely kept busy. Got all kinds of recommendations by my work leader, but uh, they didn't need me. And uh, I was in quality inspection, and uh, the the other fella, he, he and good friend. I, I'm not wanting to put him down or anything, right. but but he was just he was just in the right place at the right time to reap some benefits, uh, and, and I'm glad for that. But then in December, well, I'd heard about Fisher Body there in Mansfield uh, hiring. So I interviewed for a job out there, and they said, absolutely, we got all kinds of work out here. So I went out there and uh, worked 11 days, and they laid me off. <laughs> 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 so then I went to work. Uh, a friend of mine was working this uh, feed route. Uh, where mobile home uh, mobile grinder was going from farm to farm mm -hmm. to grind a feed for the animals there, whether it be cattle or hogs or whatever. And uh, so uh, from uh, December, end of December, uh, into March, I was on that job. And of course, I boy, that was that was a killer because we we had to leave the. The, the uh, plant there, or the, where where the uh, warehouse was for the feed and all, and the trucks, we had to leave there at seven in the morning to make our route. And if we had any problem, and most of the time we did, because it wasn't an established route, it was a route that they were trying to build. And then many many nights it would be nine o'clock or after four, we would get back to the warehouse, then we'd have to reload the trucks for the next day. And then drive uh, about a uh, half hour to 40 minutes to go home to sleep a little bit, to get back up, to be up there at 7 to hit the road again. And uh, uh, so after after about three months of that, then I, I was able to get on Cooper Bessemer there in Mount Vernon. Okay. And uh, so I was planning, my, my thoughts was, I had, I had uh, after I had got out though, I had come down here and put in an application at the base because they were taking applications at the time. And uh, I hadn't heard anything. And uh, so I, I thought, well, I'll just try to make a career out of uh, working these engines out in the field. So I was working toward that at Cooper Bessemer and I uh, was up, up there for a year. And then I, I got a notice from down here to come down and take a test. So come down and took the test and then in April of 66 I was hard in over here at the base. And had a career there till uh, uh, March of 1993. Retired, took their severance pay, was out for three years and of course as the base was closing they was losing some skilled help in some of the areas so they called me and wouldn't know whether I would want to come back. And uh, after I had uh, retired, well, I worked up at Plaza Hardware. I had worked there part okay. time uh, while I was employed at the base, and uh, but I went there full time. And uh, so in uh, uh, April of 1996, uh, I reemployed back out at the base and, and worked there till July. And of course, our department. Uh, the term turnkey, we turnkeyed in my department in July of, of uh, 96. And then I become an employee at that time of Rockwell International because they had taken over the base. And uh, then in December, 
of uh, 1996, uh, Boeing had bought that division of Rockwell out and then I become a Boeing employee. And then I spent the next 11 years working for the Boeing company then. Doing the same, well, not the same, because I wasn't always on that program. Right. But it was a program that I really, really liked working on. And uh, really, I was 66 years old. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm still pretty good health. Uh, it's just time for me to give this job to a younger person to maybe have a good career here also. And besides that, I've got this home in Florida. I just need to be down there in the wintertime. Yeah. So in uh, December 2007, then I retired and, and been retired ever since. Did, do you think your military time um, changed you any, I mean, or prepared you for later, later in your life any, or? Oh, well, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. It, uh, one of the uh, one of the things it did for me, anyway, was to to organize things. I soon learned you didn't depend on someone else for something you were responsible for. You needed to be assured yourself that that was done. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether it might be, uh, yeah, I'll take your I'll I'll take your standby tonight. You don't need to worry about it. Well, then I'm going to make sure that you're there at that time to be there to take that standby. Because some didn't check that out, and they ended up getting some discipline because they didn't show up for their time. Oh. So those types of things I learned. Right. And so that, that has stuck with me through my life uh, from, from a military standpoint. It, it's it's not wrong to double check things there. Right. Was well, there anything else that you want to share about? You but, know? Uh, no, I don't know of anything else. Uh, uh, to me, uh, the Air Force uh, has been a great experience for my life. Uh, from my military experience to being employed over here at the base, working for the Air Force, and uh, doing the work that I did over there, and, and then moving on to the Boeing Company. And, uh, Having a career there, even though short, uh, uh, it's it, it's been a blessed, good life for me good. and a good career. Good. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.